NRX Pharmaceuticals has filed a citizen's petition with the FDA seeking removal of benzothonium chloride from ketamine products. And with me is Dr. John Javitt, uh, the CEO of NRX Pharmaceuticals, to explain. But first of all, looks like you're someplace beautiful. Where is that? Well, that's the view outside my office window. That's downtown Miami. Oh, lovely. Okay. Well, um, much better than New York, I think. So you've got you've got the beautiful ocean there. Um, doctor, explain this petition. What is a citizen's petition? Why did you file it? What do you what's your goal here? So there's a mechanism where if a an ingredient in a drug doesn't have a good reason for being there, if that ingredient is not proven to be safe. Uh, then, in fact, the FDA ought to take it out. And there's this whole class of preservatives. They're called quaternary amines, which is a mouthful, uh, that were used in drugs back in the 1970s and included almost by habit uh, from a, a time when a single vial of drug could be used for multiple patients. And of course, if you're going to put a needle through a rubber stopper multiple times, you have to somehow prove that even if bacteria are introduced into the bottle, those bacteria won't survive. So back in the 1970s, when they formulated ketamine, they put this preservative of benzothonium chloride into the bottle. And it kind of became folklore that it was necessary to keep the ketamine stable and sterile. Well, first of all, times have changed. Uh, it's no longer accepted practice to use the same vial of drug for more than one patient. Uh, so, you know, the likelihood that you're going to keep uh, dipping into the vial is, is no longer the same. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we've come to learn that these uh, preservatives can be pretty toxic. Uh, I learned it when I was involved in developing ophthalmology drugs. Uh, people started to ask the question, gee, wh why do uh, people with glaucoma all seem to have dry eye? If you've been using glaucoma eye drops for a bunch of years, it's very common to complain of dry eye sy uh, symptoms. And it turns out that there was a preservative benzalkonium chloride in just about all of the eye drops that people use to treat their glaucoma, and also in, in a lot of uh, the early artificial tears. Uh, that would damage the epithelial cells on the surface of the eye and cause dry eye. Well, uh, that led to preservative free eye drops that most people use today. At the same time, benzothonium chloride, its first cousin, has been in these injectable products for, for decades. And uh, the FDA has not specifically address the toxicity of the benzothonium chloride in these injectable products because nobody submitted a new application until recently. Uh, but in fact, they have recently looked at the use of benzothonium chloride in hand cleanser and antiseptics. Uh, and although they accepted almost all of the uh, substances that were up for review, benzothonium chloride was one of four substances that they said, no, you can't use this in hand cleaner. You can't use this in topical antiseptics, it's not been shown to be safe. So we filed a petition with the FDA commissioner asking to have uh, this preservative removed from uh, intravenous ketamine, because there's no reason for it. So what's next then? When do you expect to get a response? How long might this take? Well, under the law, the FDA has six months to respond uh, but it happens that we have a Secretary of Health and Human Services who is particularly attuned to the issues of toxic preservatives in vaccines, in foods, in other substances. Uh, this is something that Secretary Kennedy has you know, openly talked about in, in multiple places. Uh, so it could be that we hear sooner than six months. And then what does this mean for NRX then? Let's let's say that the FDA agrees with your petition. What does that mean for the company? Well, we filed what's called an abbreviated new drug application uh, for ketamine so that it can be used not just to treat depression, which is how we got into the business, 
Uh, but for all of its labeled indications, about $750 million of, of ketamine gets used every year worldwide, according to industry reports, and all of it has this toxic preservative. So if the FDA agrees with us that this preservative ought to come out, uh, at least for some period of time, we may be the only manufacturer that has you know, up-to-date, proven shelf stability and sterility for preservative-free ketamine. And in fact, we filed a patent on it because the prior art all says that you need this preservative in order to keep ketamine stable on the shelf. And we've proven that, no, you don't if you do it right. Well, Dr. Javit, please keep us up to date when you hear back from the FDA so we can get an update on, on that and the business. You may have been, as you mentioned, the only one who's even called attention to this. So um, good luck and we'll wait to hear back from you. Thank you, Jane.